ASIN rates. I'm a, I'm a developer at NC State University Libraries, and um, I'm here today to show you a few things. Uh, uh, how to how to use a Dev Toolbox. So I've got this. <laughs> there's Colin. So um, uh, the idea here is I'm trying to give you some tools that an everyday developer programmer might use and the ones I use every day. I think that's something that's maybe not always uh, taught officially and it's things that you pick up over the years. Um, and so I'll be going through um, a few of the online resources um, and some jargon that, uh, you know, that comes up. And when I, I say jargon is any, any word that you don't understand, feel free to um, chime in and, and see if uh, I can explain it further and we'll add it to the list. Um, so let's see, I've got, um, so Colin added the link and that will get you to this page. It's a gist. And a gist is just a little um, GitHub page uh, that that you can edit like any other Git repo. Now I do realize that I just gave you about five uh, jargon terms <laughs> right off the bat. So we're going to get through those. Um, <laughs> thanks. So we're going to get through those together. Um, and uh, explain all of these. Uh, so, uh, but before we get into that, um, let me go ahead and give you a little background on who I am and what we're doing here today, and uh, or, or what I do, and um, the kinds of things that you can ask me about. So, I am Jason Rates. I'm a, a librarian at uh, North Carolina State University Libraries. Um, I've been working at NC State for, um, let's see, it's almost 10 years. It's kind of wild. Um, I've been in my current role for only about a year and change. Before that, I was a technician for a long time. Um, and in that role, I mainly was a PHP, JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS kind of developer. Uh, I worked with databases, I worked with uh, different programming languages, and mostly worked on core library services like the catalog and your My Account application. So if you have uh, complaints about My Account, I'm the guy that probably designed the original version of you know, what, what you're using now. Um, so feel free to ask me questions about that or give me some suggestions. Uh, let's see. So in my current role as a librarian, um, I, I'm working on some different projects. I'm working on the quick search application that the library has, where you can type in, you can go to the library homepage, you can type in a, a query, and um, you can get results in all the different applications and, and data sources that we offer. Uh, I also work with uh, Sumo, which is something that mostly just the librarians use. It's a little application that help them count heads and ha count how many people are in a, in a room at a time so they can have statistics. And I also do, um, I also work with uh, TACO, which is our, uh, our uh, most recent uh, application for getting scans of uh, textbook chapters while we're in this weird pandemic state, right? Um, it's a temporary access control uh, application. So, that's kind of what, what, who I am and, and what I do. Uh, if you look in the top right of the screen, you should see that I've got a little ask me about uh, marquee going there. And uh, if you see anything up there that you want to ask me about, uh, feel free to ask in the chat and I will do my best to give you an intro and explain things or answer your questions about it. Um, I've got a assortment of things. Hey, there's Claire. Hi, Claire. Uh, I've got an assortment of things that, uh, you know, we'll be talking about today or we might not get to today and, uh, you know, feel free to, to mention any of those. And as the jargon uh, list grows, I'll also be adding to it and I'll have a little marquee that shows up underneath that 
that will scroll through some of those jargon terms. So you can kind of see what we've talked about um, later on. And if you are new to the channel, if you just come in, you know, you'll be able to uh, see some of the terms we've talked about. And I could even repeat some of them or go back over a few. So uh, yeah, let's so let's get started. Let's uh, let's start learning some stuff. Um, let's go to um, I believe I st I've, I've started out our jargon terms here um, with CLI. I think the command line is is where a lot of uh, developers are the most comfortable, uh, where a lot of programmers are comfortable, and it's just a really powerful tool. So I don't know how many people we have in the in the in the uh, chat right now. It looks like we've got a handful. Um, if anyone, so anyone in the chat, do you guys know? what a command line is. Give it a few seconds. I'm on a bit of a delay. All right, that's okay. If no one uh, wants to uh, volunteer, that's fine. I'm gonna show you. So I got this neat little tool here that should drop down. And now I have a command line. This is a where you type commands. That's great. <laughs> That's great. And you guys avoid it. No, we're, we're hoping to change that. So maybe when you first log in to your command line, you see something similar to this, but mine might look a little fancier. Um, usually you'll have some text to the left. And maybe it'll say what computer you're on if your computer has a name. And it might say what directory you're in uh, on, your, on your computer. And so this is a way to kind of talk directly to your computer and tell it to do things. That's what a command line does. We type in commands and you know it's on a text, it's a text interface to, to, uh, to work with. Uh, to work with, talk to our computer. So uh, let's see. So some some of the common uh, commands might be, uh, well, let's print working directory. So that's a PWD, and I should keep track of that. Um, and I'll add that to our jargon list when I get a chance. But so uh, print working directory should just tell us, hey, that's where I'm at in my in my uh, directory. So that's my uh, my local username, and and that's where I'm at in the, the local directory. Another uh, common command is you know echo. So we can echo something. So if I want to type in I don't know, hi, it'll just print out hi. Okay, seems pretty useless so far. <laughs> Let's see what else we can do. Um, well, what if I wanted to um, edit a document. Um, well, a lot of programmers uh, are really partial to their editors in their in their command lines. You know, uh, Emacs or VI or VIM or VIM. Um, everyone's got their favorite. And I'm going to tell you, I'm kind of basic when it comes to this. Is there a folder bigger? That's a good question. Yeah, so um, is there a folder bigger than the uh, squiggly mark? Right. Well, there is. Uh, if you want to, you can always go. If you have a command line open, you can always go to CD, which is change directory, and the root of your file system will almost always be this little slash here, and that takes you to the the top, top, top level of your current uh, direct uh, file system. And if I do a print working directory here, it just says slash because that's all there is right there. Maybe I'll do an ls. So I'm just throwing a bunch of commands out here and we're going to go through them again. But uh, for now, let's see. Uh, I believe, what does ls stand for? List. Hmm. I don't remember the, the, what that stands for, but it just it tells you what, what directories and files are in the current directory. So you can see that on my Macintosh that I'm on, I've got, well, usually your, your most basic uh, top level things there. Um, the squiggly line that 
that you saw earlier was called my is my home directory. So anytime you log into a shell, um, oops, I'm jumping ahead again with these jargon terms. <laughs> so anytime you log into a command line interface, be it a, a, a shell or a terminal or um, a bash shell or a ZSH shell, these are all kinds of words that mean roughly the same thing. It is, <laughs> oh, good, good. Um, these are all sort of terms that mean roughly the same thing, which is just a command line interface or a terminal. Um, in Mac, this is, now it's not showing up here because I've got some fancy things going on, but if you look right here, I'm using iTerm2, and this is a, a terminal uh, application. So it just gives you a terminal. Now, um, let's see, we talked about, uh, we can go through some of these uh, commands, but uh, let me show you one of my favorite tools just to kind of start peppering in these, these tools that I use. Um, so I don't know maybe what LS is, right? So what I can do is the official way is you can do man and then whatever command you have. And usual, usually a, a program will have a manual page that tells you how to use that command. So I can do man ls, and that will bring up a whole thing about, you know, what does this command do? And, um, and this one is list directory contents. That's what this thing does. Okay, and it tells you about a it tells you a synopsis. So it tells you like all the different ways that you can use the command, which probably looks like just gibberish to you. And then it has a description and then it goes through all the different options you. <laughs> oh, I love this comment. <laughs> yes. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something that's even better than man when we get to it. Okay, so um, here's okay here's something that I learned about man and less we'll, we'll get to later. But the program that is displaying this manual page is a uh, program called less L E S S. So. Uh, if you don't know how to use less, like I don't even know how to get out of this thing right now, right? Um, if you hit escape, it doesn't do anything. Um, if you hit Q, it will exit. But if you hit H, oh no, it's not you. It's not working. There, if you hit H, you should get a summary of the command you can use while looking at this interface. Isn't that helpful? And so one of the first things you'll see, uh, let's see if I can use my mouse to actually show you what I'm talking about. Um, you can see H is how I got this help, right? Q is how to exit. E and J and all these other commands, that goes you for, moves you forward one line. So if I type in J, which is my, my usual go-to, and you can see at the bottom of the screen, I also am displaying the keys that I'm typing, right? So J and K move you up and down. And then if I want to go forward a whole window, I can do an F. And if I want, what was the go, how do I go back again? Oh no, let's see, go forward one window, back one window is B, oh, there you go. I also use a uh, space bar to move forward a whole window and U takes me back window. So there's usually multiple ways that you can move around. So. I'm going to get sidetracked so much this this uh, session, so feel free to uh, uh, you know point me back to to where we are going. But uh, you know, there's just so much here, and it's it's so confusing to so many people. It takes so long to learn um, and to build up this knowledge over time. So uh, I, I just like to to explain everything that I'm doing, so you're not lost. Um, so I'm going to hit Q. I'm going to take us out of that little thing. And I'm going to hit Q again to take us out of the man page, because I think that's the general idea of the man pages. Give you the command, tell you how to use it, give you all the different options that you can use. So these are options, these dash letters. 
these are options. So you type in a, a, a command and then usually a space and then you do a dash whatever and then it does whatever thing this option does. Okay. So and that becomes important later on. And if you're really lucky, I don't know if this one does it. I'm going to skip ahead. If you're really lucky, the man page has examples. And look how sorry that that example is. <laughs> it tells you one thing. It says ls dash l r capital S. And that will do an ls listing sorted by increasing size. OK. So I'm going to highlight that, which copies uh, whatever I have highlighted. That's just a thing that I have set up in my terminal and probably works in your terminal, too. Um, I'm going to hit Q to get out of this. And I'm going to actually I'm not going to do this in the root directory because I think that would be confusing. I'm going to change back to my home directory and then I'm actually going to change into our current session. I made a little directory for our session. So um, and now I'm going to type in that password, right? Got ls space dash l r capital S. And that tells me everything in this folder going from the smallest to the largest. And it's got and, and, and it's got a lot of other information here. And this is another sidetrack. Um, this is all, these this can be very confusing to someone. I don't know what all these numbers and things are, right? Um, I mean, you can figure out that this is probably the file names. Those look like file names you've seen, like .txt, .png, things like that. But what is all this mess over here? Ugh. Well, these are permissions. So everything on your computer has a permission associated with it, maybe multiple permissions. Who can look at this thing? Who can write to this thing? Who can execute this thing? And that's what this little shorthand does. Um, I'm probably not going to get into that uh, right now, but if someone wants me to, I could. Um, I'm just going to skip over it for now. But I can tell you that this first character, see the one that has a dash, this D? D means directory. So that means I've got another directory in here. It's a directory inside of a directory, folder inside of a folder. Um, the owner of this folder is me. I have a group that I belong to called staff. And I have, this is how many, uh, I think this is how many bytes that file is. And I believe it's also the last time that file was updated. And so you can see I was scrabbling to make some of this stuff yesterday and today. You can see those dates. Okay, now I was gonna, I, I've, I've promised a lot of things. Let's, let's go back and fulfill some of these uh, promises. Sure, I can definitely uh, make this bigger. Great. Anytime you want me to make it bigger, please let me know. I'll, I'll pump it up. There we go. So uh, let's see. I said I had a better man for you. <laughs> I wish there was a woman command. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if there is. I'm sure you can, you can make it so your computer answers to woman instead of man. Um, but let me, let me show you a better one. And this one's called TLDR. And if I do TLDR LS, I'm going to have to scroll up here so you can see the beginning of it. So it tells you what it is, list directory contents, gives you some more information on it. And then it has a bunch of examples. Oh, where was this for the years before I found it? <laughs> Man pages are, are the worst. Even though they tell you everything you want to know, they're inscrutable to a beginner, right? So one thing I love about this little program, and it doesn't have every application uh, in its, uh, it doesn't show, why it doesn't show up in yours, exactly, right? So this is something I installed. TLDR is a third party application that I've installed on my computer, and I can show you how to do it too. Um, if you are using uh, a Mac, there is a program called uh, Brew, B-R-W, uh, B-R-E-W. And I'm going to show you 
but that that's definitely worth it. Oh, it's so good. Let's see. So I'm gonna do a quick search for for brew, and I did not think that one through. So let's do brew uh, Linux, right? So this is homebrew. And oh, great, Collins dropped a link. Love it. So uh, homebrew allows you to set up your command line in um, on a Macintosh or you know Apple computer uh, so that it works like a Linux machine. Love it. Um, if you're on Windows, I can suggest that you look into this uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and uh, you might be able to get, you might be able to uh, install some things using that. And I think looks it looks like I didn't know that Homebrew was available for Windows for the WSL. So if you are using Windows, I would highly recommend um, setting up a WSL. Um, ooh, I haven't heard about chocolate tea. Um, somebody in the chat has posted a chocolatey.org what is that i'm just gonna go check it out whoa that's scary uh what is chocolatey i just wanted to know what it was okay con will have to uh give us more info on that before i go into it but uh, i imagine it's some sort of shell or terminal for windows and uh, that, that brings us to a question that someone asked earlier. Um, what's the difference between a shell and a terminal? Great question. So on a computer, when you bring up a command line interface or a CLI, you um, open it in a terminal window. Okay, oh great. Um, so you open it in a terminal window. Now the 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 flavor of that terminal, like the way that you use that terminal, that, that command line interface, the flavor is called a shell, okay? And so there are a number of shells out there. And if you are in a Linux machine, you are most likely going to start out with a bash shell. Right. So actually, I think DuckDuckGo has a, is that it? I haven't figured out how to do this yet, but I've heard that DuckDuckGo has these uh, shortcuts, but let me just do Wikipedia um, bash. And so that is a Unix type shell. And to explain a little bit more about the Unix versus uh, Linux versus all that, it's, it, I'm not the most knowledgeable, and I'm sure you can go through uh, the Wikipedia pages and read through it. It's basically the, the history of the different uh, operating systems. And you know, I believe it started with Unix, and then there's, there's branches and sort of tributaries of these different operating systems. And uh, all you really need to know is that Windows has a DOS shell by default. It's the Windows version of it. And almost everybody else uses a Unix type shell. And the most popular is Bash. Now, if you're on a Mac, you already have uh, a Bash shell set up for you. Um, and I am going to make a case for anyone who wants to take that, that plunge to check out ZSH as a replacement to Bash. Um, let me show you a little bit about ZSH. So ZSH works the same way as Bash, for the most part. I believe I can do, can I just do that? Yes. So this is um, what a Bash shell looks like. So LS still works the same, um, print working directory, uh, you know, uh, a man, print working directory, that all looks the same. You'll notice that 
there's not a lot of uh, color involved. And I think you can add that to the, the bash shell. Um, but there's also a, a lot of uh, little features that ZSH uh, allows you to get that I, I just, I love. Okay, so um, let me go back to ZSH. I think that should be able to get me back. Let's see, okay, great. I'm gonna type in clear to uh, clear my screen. So ZSH, why do I wanna use ZSH? Well, let me, let me show you. That's not what I wanted to show you. Let me show you. Um, oh, my ZSH. So this is one of the, the uh, tools I'm gonna suggest you to check out that I, I, I like anyway, I'll recommend it. Um, so it, it lets you uh, customize your terminal in all kinds of fancy snazzy ways, makes a lot of shortcuts for you that you, you know, maybe you don't wanna remember this long complicated uh, command to do something. Maybe you'd rather just remember a shorter command, like a, a little snippet that you could type in to get what you want. Uh, ZSH is great um, to install it on a Bash interface. So if you already have Bash, you're not on Windows, you're not using DOS, you're on Bash. If you're using Bash, then you can uh, use one of these methods to uh, install ZSH. And it's you would just type this in. And I can go over what what that command is if you feel if if you feel at all. Uh, queasy about typing this in, maybe don't do it. Um, but if you do feel comfortable with installing things on your command line or, or um, maybe just past the, the super beginner level, I would say uh, go ahead and go for the CSH as, as a fun alternative. And uh, so some of the things it allows you to do is change the way your shell looks. Oh, great. Colin's dropped another link. Man, these, you guys are great. Colin, uh, Claire, thank you so much for uh, dropping some of these links in there. So this, Colin mentioned a link on How To Geek on, you know, what is ESH and, and why you should use it instead. So that's, that's great. So uh, one thing that I love about it is I get to customize my command line. I don't want to know what shell I'm using when I, when I use this command line. I want to know um, who am I logged in as? Because sometimes I don't want to log in as myself. Maybe I want another server or I want to pretend to be another user on my, my uh, computer and I want, to, I want to know who I am, right? So that's important to me. I also want to know where I am. Where in the file system am I? So I, I like to plug that in. And I think that's just a little flare. It's kind of like a half-life uh, I forget what the Greek symbol is there, but that, it's like a little half-life uh, sign for fun. Um, you can change all these themes for ZSH in a uh, file. It allows you to, to edit all this stuff. So I can show you a little bit about how to look at some of these files. Um, Lambda, good, 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 good. Okay, so let's see. We've, got, we've had so many detours. I've forgotten where we started. So we started looking at your command line interface. We talked about a few commands that, you know, basic, super basic commands, how to find out information about a command you don't know how to use. And we um, went on some digressions uh, in that direction. And am, am I clear so far? I think that's kind of where we, we stood. Give it a second. All right, so from there, let me show you how to do some basic things in the command line to build upon, okay? So I'm gonna throw out a bunch of commands and we can add these to a, a list later. Maybe a Colin or somebody could just kind of keep track and we'll um, and paste it in later on as a list and I'll add it to the document. I think that'll be helpful. Uh, so I'm just going to conscript him uh, into doing that. So let's let's go ahead and look at some basic commands. We talked about ls, right? Uh, TLDR, 
love it. LS. Okay, so we've got list directory content. Look at this. We got list one, files from one per line. Did not know that you could do that with LS. You can list all the all the hidden files. List all the files with a trailing slash to the directory names. I love that feature, and I just started using it. And it not only does the slash, it also, I'll show you, it gives you a couple of other little uh, uh, bonuses. We've got a long format list. This is the, this one is, is, is so deeply ingrained into my memory that, I mean, if I type out ls, my natural tendency is just to, to finish it with dash la. Because what it does is it shows you the hidden files, and it shows you all the file permission information and when the files were updated. And so instead of showing, instead of just having ls and you see um, something, this is what ls gives you, right? Uh, which it doesn't tell you a whole lot. Maybe if your shell has a color scheme turned on, it might tell you, hey, that's a directory because it's a different color than the rest, right? Um, but other than that, ls doesn't tell you much. Whereas ls-la is kind of, you know, the, the basic, uh, more advanced version. And we've got some other ones. Uh, one I've been favorable towards lately is ls-lather, I guess, is what I'm going with. So uh, if you type that in, I'll show you all the different little... Uh, things that's done here. So we're seeing uh, hidden files, which actually there aren't any. I should maybe, uh, let me, maybe I'm going to do a little, this is a little command to just make a file without actually doing anything to it. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to, and don't ask me why it's like that. It's just kind of weird. So touch a thing and it, and it makes it. So um, I'm going to do a hidden file and it's going to be uh, I'm hidden. Oh gosh, did I not? Oh, I had a quote in there. So this is an example of some, you know, making a mistake on the command line and not knowing as a beginner, you might not know what the heck is going on. And why does it say quote there? I can attest that this has happened to me more than once and at first, I was very confused. You got to escape it, right? So um, Colin said in the chat, you got to escape it. So I don't know what to do. Now, anytime you don't know what to do with a command and you feel like you've gone down a wrong path and you don't want to continue, like you're going to mess some things up if you do, you hold down Control and hit C. Okay, that just quits out of that, that last command. Whatever command you're in, quits out of it. Very useful. This is a very, very useful uh, shortcut. So again, um, we're going to touch a file. And I had a quote mark in there. And I am going to take that out just to make it easy. All right. If I did want to leave the quote, file, the quote in there, I need to wrap it. So I need to actually put uh, the quote at the beginning and the end. I got to bookmark whatever on whatever string or series of characters um, uh, that I'm using. And I just have to do that. And that should work as well. So now, if I do, rather, actually, let's just do ls first. ls. Uh, nothing changed, right? There's about, was that, seven things? LA, ooh, we've got a I am hidden in there. Nice. Uh, let's see. Oh, when I touched it again, I was touching the same file, so it didn't do anything. Good to know. Um, so that's a hidden file. Hidden files, you know, every file system has, uh, operating system has hidden files. So that's, uh, uh, that can be frustrating if you're a developer and you need to use those hidden files. Uh, so dash la that lets you see them, right? And ls dash lathr 
gives you some more information. Now, if I go through the man page, I could, you know, we could look up each of these options, right? So we do a command space dash and then a series of options. So each letter here is an option that we're telling the command ls to, you know, change some things for us. Now, uh, la we know um, gives us this one line per file and it shows hidden files and other information, right? I also have a THR here, right? Now, I don't remember offhand <laughs> what all those letters do, but I can tell you that one thing it does is it um, shows the file sizes and directory sizes in human readable format. So instead of a big number of bytes, it's going to tell you how many kilobytes, which is the big K, big K, and then how many bytes, or if you had megabytes or gigabytes, it would show an M or a G there. Um, or if you're, a, you know, um, sitting on a lot of data, it might you might have a T there for terabytes, right? So I think that's useful. Um, you know, I forget what this at symbol does, um, but that's one of the things that this little lather other shows. Oh, it also, uh, that's right. So the T also puts, if you'll notice, this is not an alphabetical order anymore. So what did I, what order is it? It's the most recent thing at the bottom. So if you're imagining you're in a folder that's got a hundred things in it, and you're trying to find one that you just edited, Putting uh, the, I think it's the T, it's T H or R. I can't remember which one it is. Oh, great. Thank you, Colin. Um, so, one of those. Anyway, this sequence will put the most recent thing at the bottom. And so that helps me. I just touched this, I just made that file. So, I know that that's the most recent thing. Very helpful. Um, now, let's see. What was the other one I just learned about? Oh, I am transitioning to using Flather as my go-to. I'll give you a second and see if you can tell what is different there. It's a very small change for the most part. Okay. You'll notice, I'll scroll back up slowly. There's that one. Okay. I am hidden is at the bottom. Notes just as right there in blue or a cyan. Oh. But there's three things that have been added here. It tells me what the directories are without having to go over here and look at this little letter on the left. I think that's helpful. That's just me. Um, I believe it adds a few other things. So if we want to, we could go in there and we can look at uh, man. Or if you want to get super fancy, I've got a program called Batman. And I'll show you how to get that too if you want. Uh, Batman is a, it's just a fancier way to, uh, show the contents of files. Batman. <laughs> Batman's an option, but not Batwoman. You know, you can you could alias, and I'll get to what alias is later, but uh, you could alias you could make it so Batwoman would respond. But let me show you what uh, uh, Batman does. So it's the same interface. I still have an H here, you know, just like we talked about earlier. It get, gives me the help. But now we have everything is colored. Oh, I love it. Isn't that nice? So um, there's the dash app, right? So we talked about, I, I said, I really like that. So now we have a slash immediately after a path name as a directory, an asterisk after e each that is executable. I didn't have anything in that folder that, that was executable. So you would see that the, you would see that if I did. And I at sign if, um, if it's a symbolic link. So that's different than the other app sign. It's unfortunate. Um, a symbolic link is a, um, 
it is like a stand-in for another directory. It's a little shortcut. It's a little wormhole to another directory. Um, sometimes it's helpful to have uh, a fast link from one directory to another so that when programs look at the current directory, they see everything in the current directory and they see everything in the other directory too, right? Um, I, I'm probably not going to get much into that since that's kind of getting into the weeds a little bit, but um, let's see. Let me reset just a little bit after we've gone on some some uh, excursions there. So we've talked about, let's say we've talked about some, some basic commands, um, talked about some, some different shells, bash versus ZSH. I've shown you one of the, the Z, ZSH shells that I can I use. Um, I can show you really quick, well, to summarize, we've also looked at um, LS and we've learned a little bit more about LS. We've talked about a couple other commands, touch and echo. Less is one of my favorite commands. Less is a way to just look at the text of a file without uh, worrying about editing it at that time. So maybe um, let's look at, uh, so less AMA and dot text, right? So that just brings up that file. This is that file, ama.txt. And if I type in J and K, I can move up and down like we talked about earlier, right? If I get lost, I can hit H, and that gives me some uh, commands on how to, how to use less. I wish I'd known about that earlier. That was a thing I learned fairly recently. Um, and so this is great. It just shows us you know, what, what's in that file. And if you look, you'll see that this list is the same list that is right above my, my head uh, that is scrolling through under Ask Me About. Okay, so that's where that list is coming from. And we also talked about Nano it was, a, was a program to edit. Did we talk about Nano? I think we did. We did not. Ooh. Um, I think I started to, and then I sidetracked myself. So we've got, uh, I think I started to talk about text editing uh, from the command line. So you may be used to bringing up Word or text edit or uh, Notepad++ if you're on Windows, it was a big favorite of mine, um, to edit files, right? So if you're in the command line, you can use VI and Vim, Emacs, um, or you could just use Nano, which is almost on everything, and I love it. It's super easy. Um, uh, I will say, if you're just learning, Vim is worth an investment. That's what all the fancy programmers use, and I wish I knew it better. Um, but Vim uh, is more powerful and fancy. Uh, but if you just need something to work, um, where you don't have to memorize a bunch of weird uh, keystrokes, uh, Nano is where to go. So uh, let's, let's edit the AMA file. OK. So now we have basically a little text editor. And I can use my up and down arrows to move around. And at the bottom, you'll see that there are these like commands. And this, just, this little caret symbol is just means that's a, you hold down Control and hit O and that will do that command, okay? Good question, I'll get to that. I'll get to that in just a second, Claire, good question. So, um, oh, so quick with these links. So let's go ahead and edit this, right? So ask me about, actually, let's see. Oops, sorry. I apologize. I'm just going to throw it in. Uh, oh, I don't know. Let's do it. Let's. I'm going to throw it in right here. Um, uh, uh, and so I've typed in that. 
Now, if I exit this little command here, so if I hold down the control key and hit X, it's gonna say save modified buffer. It's just asking you if you wanna save what you just wrote. Uh, so if you don't, you would hit the N key, and if you do, you hit the Y key. Um, I believe you can also hit enter, and that should uh, work as a no, right? Uh, but it also tells you under underneath right here, Y yes and no, control C is cancel. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, I hit yes. If you wanna change the name, you could do that here. I'm just gonna hit enter to, to go ahead and, and change it. <clears throat> now, if we're lucky, uh, the scroll bar is close, it is not. So after your suggestions for this line, should show, start showing the new text file. And uh, I will uh, agree with uh, uh, Library Colin that Vim Adventures is a great way to learn Vim. It is kind of a neat way to learn it. Oh, I'm not seeing uh, it update yet. Oh gosh. Oh, what did I just do there? Did you guys see that? I typed in A M A, which isn't even the capital, right? And I hit the tab button and that auto complete that file for me. Awesome. Isn't that handy? So the tab button lets you auto complete things if it can guess it. Very handy if you're doing quick things in the command line. Just hit tab. So start typing whatever it is and then hit tab. Oh, great. Vim Tutor is the built-in way. That's good to know. Okay, so let's see. Did my thing get in there? Command line tools, why don't you use Vim? Hey, it did show up in the thing above. Great. Okay. So uh, Claire was asking, uh, what makes Vim more difficult? Uh, Vim is heavy, heavy, heavy on using keystrokes to navigate. So Les did that too, but Vim is is a little bit more uh, um, strict about it. And yep, there's also the CS Bailey uh, also is right there. It he says that it's he or she says that it's a uh, uh, learn the modal approach to text editing make things happen. Yeah, so the, one of the benefits of working in Vim, and if you ever watch uh, a YouTube video where someone is doing command line things and they're just whizzing around the screen and they've, they've segmented their command line or their terminal into different windows and they're just hitting very few strokes, but a lot of things are jumping around and moving around on the screen. It's because Vim is sort of like uh, learning um, how to ride a bike or how to uh, play an instrument. Because once you've ingrained those keystrokes and chords, like multiple keystrokes and types of keystroke modifiers into your brain, then it just makes everything quicker. Because it's like uh, learning how to, to type on a QWERTY keyboard. Like if you take keyboarding, instead of hunting and pecking, suddenly you're just you're, you're just, without even thinking about it, you're, you're, making, you're typing words, right? So that's what Vim is. So it, it allows you to, um, it allows you that economy of motion to get a lot of things done. And it, it does take a little effort to learn. And that's why they have things like Vim Adventures that Colin linked um, or the Vim tutorial, which is, which is already in it. Um, but I've just found it, uh, I've, I've tried it a few times. And I just I bounce off every time. I just, I think you have to throw yourself into to learning how to operate in that mode. Oh, and that was the other thing that Bailey mentioned. It's a modal approach. So when you, if, if you're on a, a terminal and it opens up um, a file in Vim, you'll notice that when I'm hitting J and K, I'm not, it's just moving the cursor up and down. 
um, it's not actually typing J and K. That's because I'm not in an editing mode. Um, I forget what the name of the mode is that I'm in. But um, if I want to type, I believe I have to do, oh no, I have to do a, a, a colon and then I don't know. Is that it? Hey, there we go. There's H. That gives me help. Um, move around. There's J and K. Closing this window. That's like the most common thing that people want to get out of Vim. I don't know how to get out of Vim. Well, this tells you what to do. Um, you type in the, the colon character, Q, and you hit enter. Um, well, that, that's how to get out of this window. Sorry. Ooh. Colon, Q, A, uh, exclamation mark, and then enter. And that gets out of whatever you're in without saving any changes. So that's that's good to know. Um, I'm just going to use my mouse here to scroll. Uh, let's see. So those are the different modes, right? So you start off in uh, a normal mode, I believe, and or a visual mode, maybe. And then if you want to get into a uh, insert mode, which is where you can type, it's I underscore, I believe. Um, gosh, I'm not the right person to explain Vim. So I'm going to go ahead and nope out of this. Uh, definitely check out that Vim Adventures if you want to, to learn more about Vim. I think Vim's great. I just uh, haven't learned how to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my uh, colon Q enter. And I'm going to hit colon Q A exclamation mark, get me out of Vim. And one of the first things I do when I have a new machine, a new computer, is I set my default editor to nano. <laughs> so that when I type in things that bring up an editor, it doesn't auto put me into Vim, it puts me into Nano, which I'm a lot more comfortable with. Um, and I believe you can do what every other programmer in the world does. And if you forget how to do something like setting your default editor, text editor, um, you know, go to Google or DuckDuckGo duck, duck, and just type in, um, you know, default editor. And, uh, you can usually do Unix or Linux or whatever. There you go. First one looks like a good link. And I believe that is roughly right. I, it may, you may want to double check it later on. But if you were to type that into your, uh, in, into your command line and then just change this editor with whatever program you want to use, like Vim or Nano, um, that should work. Now, if you don't know what it is, I believe let's see what our current one is. Does that work? No, what is it? Ah. Dollar sign? No. What's the command to find my thing? To find my uh, environment? Gosh. See, this is, I've been using this, I've been a programmer for a while, and I forget how to do some very basic things. And so, like everyone else, I will Google it. Uh, current environment variable. Um, environment variable, uh, and we'll do uh, OSX just, just to uh, tell it, you know, what kind of operating system I'm using. Let's see. Uh, there's settings, setting variables. Hmm. OSX Daily sounds like a reputable source. Let's try that out. Let's see. I'm going to scroll through this, don't worry. There we go. Get a list of your environmental variables. You can use the following command, print env. All right. Now, echo editor. Yeah, that might have worked. I'm not sure. I'll have to try that. <laughs> that just said that, that that should just echo whatever you type after it. Uh, I think. 
Oh, there it is. It's a dollar sign in front. So I was typing it in as a command. Well, it's it's not a command. It's a string. It's basically just this is a key for a uh, value, and the value is nano. That's how key values work, right? And so I, when I was typing in dollar sign editor, it was like, hey, you're just typing in uh, the text nano. Doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not going to do anything, right? Uh, but if we did want to look at, uh, oops, gosh. If we did want to look at uh, the environment, I can do a print env, and there we go. Whoa, lots of stuff there, right? I have got a lot of customization going on in my environment. And so you could go through here and you could find, uh, I don't want to show all this stuff necessarily, so I'm just going to do that and then and then hit clear. Um, uh, so let's see. We've gone through uh, how to edit files, how to find fi or how to look at files in the command line. Let's talk about. Did, do we have any questions on stuff that we've done so far? Something I missed before I move on. I like DuckDuckGo as well. It's kind of neat. Any questions? All right. I'm going to, let's see. Check and make sure nothing's going on with the moderators. OK, great. Um, so let's just keep going. Uh, let's look at, uh, let's look at regular expressions. I know I'm a little lost but I know where to go look now. Well, that's great. I'm glad that uh, uh, dwlib, uh, I'm, I guess I, know, I think I know who that is. If I said it out loud, that got it. If, if, you, uh, if you need it, if you have any other questions, uh, dw, please, uh, please let me know. Um, let's see. Hmm. How about we talk about, we'll do some more command line stuff and then we'll get to some editor stuff, um, some, some IDE stuff, but you know where to find me. Okay, Colin's like, oh no, regex. Okay, regex is hard. We're gonna make it easier and we're gonna give you just enough to know what's going on. And we'll tell you where to find the tools you need to use to learn it. Sound good? Good. OK. Let's see. Let's go ahead and um, talk about what a regular expression is. OK? Anyone know what a regular expression is? Well, I'll pull up, I'll pull up uh, Wikipedia on that while I wait on somebody to tell me what a regular expression is. Like a, a sort of definition of it, right? Okay, great, Colin. Thank you for helping out. Colin's out. All right. So, regular expression, Wikipedia, here we go. And if you, if your brain turned off before you were done with the second line, it's okay. I'm just doing this for completeness so that you know where to get the, uh, the technical definition of it, okay? So if, you, if you're, you're uh, already getting bored and, and, and wanna go somewhere else, then don't, don't leave yet, okay? Except for Colin, he's gotta go. Um, let me show you one of my favorite uh, things here. So I believe I've got a link Oh, no, I didn't put the link in yet. So regex 101. We'll go to DuckDuckGo here and pull open regex 101. That's it. It's just regex. Let me just go ahead and I'm going to put that into my off-screen editor so I know to get that later. Okay. This is a great site. This tells you what 
how to use regular expressions. Now, I'm going to give you my definition of what a regular expression is. It is a uh, sort of, uh, it is a very intricate way to search for, uh, for strings or characters uh, in a larger uh, document, okay? I'm going to say that a couple more times so that hopefully you'll get it. A couple different ways here. So a regular expression is a way to find um, a target string in a larger document. Uh, can it be any type of document? Well, it only works, when I say document, I mean um, a, uh, a, a basic text file. So a file that just has text and you know, it's just different lines of characters, right? Right. You can use regular expression in other programs and for other kinds of documents, but that is usually up to whoever made that application that you're using. So if you're using it in Excel or Word, that's because someone in Excel or Word programmed in how to use a regular, regular expression. And it's the same for every application. You have to have somebody implement it. Um, so it's not guaranteed to be there, but man, uh, developers love regex. And so when they make applications, they tend to make it as a uh, advanced search feature. Um, but uh, so that's basically what it does. It lets you find a needle in a haystack or many needles in many haystacks, or it lets you find all the needles to sit in the haystack, group them together and do some stuff with them or to, to change them to, you know, like a find and replace. So the, the, um, the things you can do with a regular expression are just, there's so many different things and there's so many different ways to find your needle. Um, depending on what you know about where it is, right? So let me show you um, this. This is just a great tool. Um, I said earlier that other applications make use of regular expressions, right? Well, it turns out there's a lot of different little flavors of regular uh, regex, as people call it. Um, and here are some of the different languages on the left-hand side of the screen. Is that big enough? I hope this is big enough. There, we're gonna bump it up a little bit. So <clears throat> there are a couple of different versions here of uh, regex, regular expressions. Great, thank you, Claire. Um, and depending uh, on what programming language you're using, you may choose to use a specific version. Okay. And it will, this, this website will help you get it in the right form for that programming language. So you can see how this little input box here started out in a PHP uh, version, which is a pro PHP is a programming language. Um, it starts out in a PHP version that has a slash and then it has your expression and then it has another slash and it has GM as who knows what, right? You don't know yet. And when we switch to, say, Python, now it just has an R with a quote mark instead of those slashes. And that's just the way that Python uh, uses regular expressions. OK, so let's do some regular expression stuff. Um, let me take, I'm going to copy and paste some stuff. I'm going to drop down my little command line. I love this ter um, tool. And I don't think it. I've mentioned it. Um, oh, good, thanks. I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, put that in our document later. I'll be updating that uh, document that Claire linked earlier, that, that dev toolbox notes. I'll be updating it with all the tools and languages and terms and jargon, everything that I, I said today, hopefully. It may take me a while, but I'll, I'll get it all in there with some links. So I'm going to make sure to get in a. Um, uh, uh, I'll make sure to get in regex and, 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 um, and I can't think where it was. Uh, let's, 
yeah, I'll make sure to get everything in there. So let's see. That's regex 101. Okay. Oh, I term two. That's that's the thing I was trying to remember. I term two is a is a OSX program that I'm using for my terminal. And um, I'm a big fan of it. If you I know that I'm jumping around here a little bit, but I'll just put that here and we'll we'll go look at it later. Okay. So I'm gonna scroll up here. I'm just gonna grab uh, all this stuff, right? Or I could just grab some of this stuff. Let's see. If I highlight everything, it should add it. Okay. That's now in my, by highlighting it in this terminal, I've copied it, which is real handy. So now I can go into this program here and I can just paste in whatever text document I'm working with to, to play around. This is just a this is just a sandbox to get used to regular expressions, right? Hopefully I don't have anything uh, sensitive in here, right? I don't know what that is. Looks looks funky. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, so we were talking about earlier the reason that we went down this rabbit hole was we were talking about environment variables for your command line. And I didn't know what editor I had set. Now, if I'm trying to figure out what editor I have, and I didn't know um, that that was nano, but I did have a list of all the environment variables for this terminal, all the keys and values that, um, this terminal knows about, that's the environment variables, what environment it's in. Okay, so the keys and values. So I don't know what editor it's using. I don't even know what, I wasn't sure what the editor uh, key was, right? So I can take all of that, I can copy it, and we're gonna look, use some regular expressions to find it. Okay, so let's try just typing in editor. Oh no, we didn't get anything, right? Now, over here on your right, I'm gonna hide some of this stuff since the screen's so big. Uh, it will tell you what the regular expression you just typed, what it does. So, editor matches the characters, E-D-I-T-O-R, literally, and it's case sensitive, okay? G, that's this little modifier in the end, it's like a, it's like a command option, right? Um, that says global. Okay, so it matches everything. It doesn't just stop at the first match. And then M is multi-line, and that means it it uh, uses it does um, causes it to match. Right. So don't worry about M for right now. But these are modifiers that. Uh, regular expressions use to say, hey, I want to look at the beginning of a string, uh, the beginning of a string of characters. That's kind of what I mean when I say string. Anytime I say string, and that's a good jargon term uh, to put in there, um, I'm just saying um, when I say string, I mean a, a, a string of characters. That's what a, a computer believes is, is a string, right? Um, so let's see. Uh, so it's, it's not finding editor, but it says it's, it's, uh, um, case sensitive. So if I type in editor, all caps, let's see if it matched it and look, it did match it. Um, but that's because I knew what the key was. That's how I just typed in editor, right? Maybe I knew that it was nano. Oh gosh, there's a bunch of nanos in here, right? I didn't know there were so many environment variables that had nano. What's the first match? Oh, this is, this looks like, uh, this is my path. Path is another advanced topic. Uh, 
path is uh, where your command line looks for things. OK, great, Claire. Thank you. So path is where, where your computer looks for things. And so your path is just a, a bunch of directories that it will look for things when you type it in the command line. Okay. And so that's what this that's why this nano is showing up here. It says, hey, make sure to look in this folder for nano. Um, when you know you type stuff in the command line, if somebody types nano, look in this folder. Use that version of nano. Okay. It looks like Oh, it looked at, there's another version of nano or another path. And then there's the editor that we were looking for. Okay. All right. I hope this isn't too dry for anyone. Okay. Um, other regular expression stuff. Well, that's the great thing about this website is it has this quick reference. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger since our screen is kind of scrunched feeling. And I'm going to just hide this part over here, I think, if I can. Oh, it won't let me drag it over. Nope. Oh, gosh. Nope. Didn't want to do that. All right. Well, couldn't get rid of that. So we can make this bigger. This tells you all of the regular expression shortcuts for things and what they do. Um, they call things tokens and anchors and meta sequences and quantifiers. Basically, this is the um, specialty language that regular expressions understand. And so if I wanted to find a single character, A, B, or C, I could type in here a bracket, left bracket, A, B, C, and then a right bracket. And then if you look through the list, you can kind of see it. So it's because it's a dark on blue on dark. You can see all these matches. So it found an A there, found a B there, and so on. So this is just teaching you the language to regular expressions. And it takes a while to learn, but uh, it's very helpful. So maybe I want to get all the lowercase letters. So that's all the characters A through Z. And it's only A through Z. Well, then you just type in A dash Z in your brackets. And so it'll get every single character as a match for your regular expression. So remember, we are looking for needles and haystacks. And it just found a whole bunch of needles. And because we asked it for our needles that we're interested in are any single character. Oh, yeah, this is such a great tool. OK, so maybe I, I'm looking for. Um, you know, uh, a uh, let's see what are what are some of the other modifiers we can use here? Quick reference. Let's look at it. Let me uh, make it bigger again. So here are the more common tokens. We could do lowercase and uppercase. Sure. We could do any single character. That's the dot, and that one's tricky to understand. That just says um, you can just hit dot, period. And that will make that will match every single character in your string. Not totally useful by itself, but as a link between two things that you know about, dot is awesome, because maybe I want to find something that begins with RVM. I don't know what it has in, uh, after that, but maybe I know it ends in URL. Right, and we have to tell it uh, how many of these dots, and I'm going to say star. That's another uh, keyword term. And so now it's looking for anything that set start that has RVM, the characters, any character, as many times. Quantifier matches the previous token zero and unlimited times. It's greedy. And then the character's URL. And look, RVM URL. Pretty cool. Um, love that when you hover over the thing on these little key, these uh, wildcard, these funky characters, it tells you what they do. 
And if you look at the explanation, it also tells you here. So it kind of spells everything out for you if you don't know exactly. So Claire asked if it was, if, if a period star fills in the blank section. Yes, it fills in anything between those two things, right? And so maybe we want, um, maybe we want anything that ends in equal sign, okay? Starts with RVM, ends in, in the equal sign, but maybe we also want um, only the flag or URL uh, to show up in between, right? So that's another one down here. So we can match either A or B. So it works a little bit like this. Let me see if I can get this right. Um, well, actually, that might be too too advanced of a of a, of a term. Um, I'm trying to think of something that would be off by one character, maybe. Um, yeah. Okay. So how about how about we look for something? Just looking at that top there, maybe we want something that has either um, an underscore or a uh, slash mark. Now this it's saying is a, is a problem, pattern error. It says an unescaped delimiter must be escaped. This is saying that this slash that I'm using, which I'm really trying to match this guy right here, it's not reading it as a character. It's reading it as a fancy regex uh, um, uh, keyword kind of character. And so to escape that, so that it just looks at it as a character, you would put a, um, a, a backslash or a forward slash, whatever, uh, in front of it. And so now it's matching those slashes, right? And so this is just the, um, it's a, it's the key above your return, your enter button on your keyboard, and you hold um, you hold shift to get that character. And the other character, that escape character, is the one also above the enter key, but you don't hold shift, right? OK, so I'm, I'm not going to get too much in, more into regular expressions because I feel like we've, we've kind of showed you where to get some information about it. Um, but there's a lot of good stuff in here. And if I can think of it, uh, or if anyone else wants to send in a, a link to another, like a regex thing that similar to the Vim playground that we showed earlier, um, feel free to do that and we'll add it to our list of links later. I don't want to get caught on that too much since we're taking up a lot of time on that. Um, so let's see, we've, yeah, let's go ahead and leave that site. I term two, we talked about that as a terminal replacement. So instead of whatever your default Mac um, terminal, uh, I term two is, is just a, a fancier one and it's, um, and it's got some different features like split panes and you can use tabs and you can have background images. And I love that I term two, I can hit a keystroke. I've set a keystroke for this that just where it, whatever I'm doing, I can hit that and I've got a terminal to play with. It's very handy. Um, so I term two is a tool that I use. I'm just going to start throwing some tools at you here. Um, Let's see, we did OMI, CSH, we did Regex 101, Rubular. So Rubular. Add that to my list here. Rubular is just a regular expression tool, just like that last one, but it's specific for Ruby. So um, it's very similar. It, I, it, it probably has a little bit cleaner of an interface, maybe not as uh, detailed, but it works the same. If you've got a string of characters, right? So um, let me uh, just grab this, this, right? I'll just grab that and I can put it into Rubular as my test string. And then you can start playing with your regular expressions here. So maybe I want to find 
Um, where, where is Mozilla, right? Where is that matched? Great. Or um, how often is PHP matched? Great. Uh, technically, I could do PH. And since PHP is repeated, <clears throat> or P is repeated, I only have to do it once here, right? And so that'll just, that does, it's a little bit quicker than the other uh, regular expression uh, editor. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's just for Ru the Ruby language. Um, most regular expressions are pretty similar. So you can kind of use this one for any one of them and then just double check and make sure it works in your editor, your language of choice. But it also has a nice cheat sheet here that I think is a little bit more succinct and explanatory. And heck, you could just copy and paste that, take a screen grab of that, and uh, you know, save it in your desktop somewhere, and you'll have it. Um, in fact, that is another tool. If you have a Mac, if you have a Mac, you can hold Shift, Command, and the number four, and then let go. And it will change this little cross, uh, this little, uh, what's it called, target uh, thing that tells you, those little numbers tell you what where on the screen you are. If you drag over an area of your screen, it will just clip it. And it saves it to your desktop. And that's so handy. You can annotate it, you can draw on it, save it, email it, whatever. Um, and then you can just you can just close. You don't have to do anything, but you can just close it. You don't have to click on it. Um, great for doing uh, screenshots of anything. Uh, it's Shift Command and the number four. Um, and uh, Claire asked if there were any big differences for Ruby expressions uh, between uh, regular expressions in Ruby versus like JavaScript or PHP. Um, you know, I don't know that. That would have to be something that you'd have to look up. Um, I imagine that the core of the the regular expression, the thing that happens between this guy, this slash, and this slash, the stuff in this box is going to be the same in any language. I imagine. I don't think there's much difference there. The differences may show up in these modifiers that happen after. And it may show up in maybe you don't use these slashes to delineate the regular expression. But uh, the thing inside here, it's, it's mostly going to be the same in any language. So if you like this uh, this uh, edit, uh, playground editor, this might be a good one to use. And I, I'm not going to go into all the, the details of regular expressions, but there's when, it's kind of like Vim. Once you get good with a regular expression, you can do so much. And so I highly recommend practicing using regular expressions in your day-to-day -day if you can. Um, and I find I use it in the command line anytime, all the time because I'm parsing these large documents that have so many um, you know, fields, like a log file for a server. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out where's the, the, the error that I want to find out about. And going through that text file that maybe is gigabytes large can be quite daunting for any other editor. But if you're in the command line and you can use a regular expression, you can find it pretty quick. So um, I'll show you real quick how to do uh, regex in the command line. And then with the last half hour, maybe we'll do some, some more uh, fun stuff. Um, so let's see. Uh, printf gave us the, the series of, of characters above, right? Well, <clears throat> we can take, we, we, we uh, let, me, let me think how to do this. Let me, let, me, let me back up a little bit. What do we have in this folder? We've got the AMA text. That's got some stuff in it, right? Uh, or the jargon text. That's what we need to add to anyway. Let's, let's look at that. So if we ls jargon. Sorry, not ls, it's l-e-s-s. -S. I've got one entry in there, cli, OK? Let's add some more stuff, and then we'll get to the regular expression stuff. So nano, jargon, I'm going to scroll through the chat and see if I can find 
the last list of jargons that was put up. Let's see. There's there's some. Okay. So we've got these aren't really jargons as much as commands, but hey, you know we'll, we'll put it in there for now. Um, I'm going to take the commas out. And I'm glad there's not a longer list here with the commas because if there was, I'd have to show you another tool to, to sort that out, right? So now we've got a list. I can exit to, to exit out of this. We talked about that earlier. I can also write out. That's this, uh, this thing right here. That just means save what I have, but stay in the editor. And that will go ahead and change the file, but not leave the editor. Write out's kind of handy. Uh, the other thing I use a lot is um, I, I'll use the cut and the paste. But you know, let me just go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and just exit out. I'm going to save the modified bu buffer by hitting yes. I'm going to hit enter to keep the same name. And now if we do a less on jargon, right? We've got uh, a, a longer list. And I think we have enough that I can turn that on in the stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back and turn that on. There. So now we've got a little list there going. Great. What else? Did somebody let me scroll to the bottom here of the chat and see if anyone else posted stuff? Sounds good to me. Ta-da. Great. Okay, so let's uh, let's add some th some more things to that list. Hmm. How do we append things in the command line to a text file? So maybe I want to add some text to the end of a file, right? So let's see, append text end of file. Type in Unix or Linux. Those are all good keywords. And you should hopefully see somebody's told you. Let's see. You just have to be careful about what sites. There we go. Stack Overflow is one of the sites that I, I'll add to the list. This is a, a programmer's, one of their, our favorite websites because everyone asks questions that we have. We very rarely have a unique question. So, uh, how to add text at the end of each line. So if somebody put in some a question and then the community is answered. Now, I will say about the community, um, it's a bit like something like Reddit where people give up votes to the most popular things, but it's also been around for a long time. So, so some of these answers may not be good anymore. So you do have to pay attention to what year it was answered or when it was updated. That can kind of change some of these things, but look, um, this guy he he wanted he he put in he replaced things at the end of a line. Oh, this is end of each line. That's not what we want. Uh, that's interesting, but that's not what we want. Uh, what is this? There you go. It's this double arrow. Append standard output to file. When did Stack Overflow start? I do not know. That is a good trivia question. Uh, let's see. So how to append things at the end of a line. So Stack Overflow is, well, that's a that's not a jargon. What is a jargon that we've talked about? Uh, maybe I do, I want to take, I want to echo uh, whoa, 2008. Uh, I want to echo, um, I think, uh, hmm, regex. Okay. So if I type in echo regex, it prints it on the screen. This is standard out. And don't worry if you don't remember that. It was years before I, re I could internalize something like that and remember it, but that is standard out. I can take that standard out and send it to the end of a file. 
I'll let you look at that first. So I'm saying echo regex. There is a use for the echo command. So I've got regex. And I'm going to put that at the end of the jargon uh, jargon.txt file. Great. Now, if uh, you look above my head, it has it. LS flather regex. It's right there. That echo came back around, right? Well, here's the thing. I like echo, but you know what else is great? Let's see. Oh, that doesn't work because that's not a string. So we tell the command, oops, we tell the command line that it's a string by putting some quotes around it. And for cat, no. <laughs> oh, I thought you could do that. Oh, is cat for only fi only for files? Okay. Cat jargon. I thought cat did anything you gave it, but no, cat jargon. Um, before I do that, I think at the very beginning of the stream, if you weren't here, we talked about how to figure out what a command does. Like, I have a vague understanding of cat, apparently. So I can do tldr cat if I have that installed. If not, I can do man space cat. And there we go. So print the contents of a file. Oh, it doesn't do uh, text. Oh, I thought it did. That's what it goes for. So cat jargon would give me jargon text. Right. So cat just prints it into standard out. We've talked about less was a command that uh, brought up like a, uh, it's like a little command line program to read something, right? Q to exit that. Um, there's also more if you want to get fancy. There's a bunch of programs. There's, there's tons and tons of programs to do the same thing. Um, I'll throw a few other programs in here while I'm talking about it. Uh, Let's talk about tail, tail jargon. Well, that just gives you everything because target uh, because jargon is so short. But tail looks at the very end of a file first. So if you tldr tail, scroll up a little bit here. Last part of a file. This is so helpful when you have a large log file and you just want to find the stuff at the end. You just put in debt. You can just do tail and then the file. Or if you want the last 20 lines, you could do dash n 20 and then the file. So here we go. We've got tail dash n. Maybe I just want the last three lines of jargon. Boom. Isn't that cool? Maybe you have a program uh, a file that is being written to as we speak like a log file you can do a tail dash f and that option lets you uh, keep reading until you quit it so if you're looking at a server log file and you're hitting the server you're you're, you're trying to query uh, websites and you're getting errors well you could actually watch those errors come in if you do a tail dash f it's really handy um, let's see, uh, instead of tail, well, you can do a head and it works pretty much the same. You could just do like maybe the first two lines of jargon. That gives you the first two lines. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? Uh, let me see if I can get back to my, uh, let's see. Oh, I haven't gotten so many things. Okay. Do I have any unfinished business before I move on? Is anyone missing anything that I have only briefly touched on? I'm trying to think. I know we're starting to go down a route with the regex. I think we're getting a little lost in the weeds on that. So I'm going to move on to something else. Okay. 
we can come back if anyone has questions. Can I use another one? I forgot to put link in yet, but uh, can I use? I will definitely get to the Back to the Future reference before I'm done. Count on it. Okay, so this is such a wonderful resource for uh, anyone doing web development work. So we've been talking so much about command line things, but that's mostly dealing with file and file operations and um, text manipulations and filtering. And that's kind of what we've been talking about. Uh, with web development, you use uh, a few different languages to show websites. So you got HTML. That's for our jargon uh, list there, HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript. And there are even some more sort of uh, esoteric things like SASS, SAS, or, um, oh gosh, I just blanked, but there's so many different things. Well, this site is wonderful because it lets me know what browsers support what things. So let's see, it says most search features. So let's just look at one. Um, maybe I have found some guide on the internet that says you should use CSS position colon sticky to uh, um, set an element on a page to be kind of sticky feeling, right? Well, here's the problem with, uh, There'll be a slight problem with CSS uh, position colon sticky. Um, and it tells you what it does here, right? Um, this shows you all the different browsers that are in use in the world and which ones support it. If it's green, it supports it. If it's red, it doesn't. If it's green with a number, it means it sort of supports it, right? And you can hover over these things to find out more information. So maybe we're interested in the Opera uh, browser. Does Opera support position sticky? Well, partial support because it's got the stripes on it. It says it supported the TH elements but not T head or TR. Well, that could be very important to what we're doing, right? Um, it also shows you the Opera. Um, I can't move the hover without, without moving the, the thing to show you, but under the right column there, it says uh, under browser version, Opera 73 was released in February of 2021. And the usage globally is 0.33%. Now, this becomes really important about you know things like equity and um, uh, accessibility for people. Um, you know, the lower that number, the less important people take. Um, you know, the browser, different browser supports. And as an organization, you have to find out what your organization or what your, your company, your, your organization, your um, group decide is your level of compliance. Because if you, are, if you are stuck only supporting things that every browser made uh, supports, you're gonna be locked into some older uh, features, and you're not going to be able to use some of the newer features without some hoop jumping and some and some and some fancy hoop jumping. Uh, so this tells you uh, what which browsers support what. And there was a question about what's common for each browser to support completely different things. Yes, every browser uh, supports different things. They try to be the same. They try to uh, agree on standards, and there's a, a standards body, uh, a, a group that has decided on the standards for, for browsers and, um, and these different web technologies. But uh, every browser has implementation. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a moving target for these implementations. And so usually the standards will say, hey, we want to use position sticky on this version. And it'll give a version number. And everyone will be working towards that version of whatever the standard is. So let me let me go back and give you another one that I like. Uh, you know, can I use uh, 
Flexbox. Love Flexbox. Flexbox is a way to orient things on a website, how to manipulate where a box is on the, on the screen and how it flows as you change the size of your, of your browser. Well, let's see, CSS Flexible Box Layout Module. That is looking pretty green. So this line is the one that you're interested in. This is the most recent versions of all these different operating systems and everything supports Flexbox except for dun, 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 IE 11, Internet Explorer 11, the bane of everyone's existences. Um, you can see that it is somehow still used by almost 1% globally, which is nuts. But that's where we're at, and it's never going to change. <laughs> uh, so that is one that your organization may start to shift away from, depending on how important your application, your website is, uh, for support for those one percenters. Um, now, I will say that there are certain types of devices, maybe, that are stuck on that version of IE. And that may be, depending on what application you're making, that may be a, uh, uh, a consideration. But otherwise, uh, majority of the business world, at least, and, and uh, industry and, and most uh, government uh, agencies, I believe, will also say we're starting to phase out IE11, making everything support IE11. We're going to try. We make, a, we make an effort. But maybe we don't try as hard. But man, even you know Opera Mini and the Android browser and the Opera Mobile, those guys are always falling on some of these newer features. And it looks like uh, even they support Flexbox, which is great news. Maybe um, this is a JavaScript function uh, that came out in a fairly recent version of JavaScript. <clears throat> you can't use async and await on some of these browsers. Now, I think Baidu is a Chinese uh, browser. Global usage is 0%, so maybe not worry about that one. And it looks like that one is at 0.08%. So you can also see these are released. The last version of that was 2017. last version of that was 2018. We don't have to support it if the companies that produce these browsers aren't supporting it anymore. So that's something to kind of think about. Opera Mini, they always show that it's being read on a lot of things. That version is 2015. So even though 1% of the globe uses it, maybe not as important. So um, this is such a, such a great website. It tells you, uh, you know, who's aligned, you know, where the usages are. Looks like a lot of people use different versions of Chrome. Ooh, that's surprising. 11% of Chrome, uh, of, of the global uh, use, are using between 55 and 88 version of Chrome. That's good to know. What makes it mini, Opera Mini? I believe that is a Opera, a specific version of Opera that was made for uh, a type of device. I think it might have been like a before Opera Mobile. I think it might have been Opera Mini. I'm not sure. You'd have to find that one out. Okay, let me see. Let me try and get through some of these other big links that I uh, I had set aside to use. So, can I use wonderful site? Anything that you find in a in an online tutorial uh, that, for web technology, HTML tags, JavaScript functions, CSS uh, uh, features like var CSS variables, something like that. Check it out and can I use before you put it in your production ready. Uh, website. Online PHP editor. Okay, so I started out using PHP when I was first a programmer. And um, I still kind of like PHP. It, I think it gets a bad rap. Uh, you know, a lot of the the new, fun, uh, popular programming languages kind of turn their nose up at PHP. Uh, but I will say the older versions of PHP uh, were pretty uh, rough, and they had some weird quirks. And so if you ever are trying to figure out what version of PHP, um, say, uh, a, a function would work on and how it looks in a certain version of PHP, 
this is a great little website um, that is linked in the uh, um, <clears throat> in my gist page that uh, that will let you do that. So here we can we can see um, let's see I could do I could include end of life versions. So a lot of times we're using really stale versions of something. So maybe I want to look at uh, oh let's just do whatever the, the default there is. And so it'll actually run through all the different versions of PHP and tell you what the output would be for that that's that's that code. And it might not change between the versions, and sometimes it does. And it's good to know when there are changes. And then as a uh, coder, a developer, programmer, uh, you may need to know that. So you can see here, older versions of PHP, uh, no SPN, no bueno, no good. Um, so that's good to know. But all these versions, good to go with those, that set of code. I'll throw a few more at you here before we're, we're at the technical two o'clock uh, cutoff. So let's see, uh, online photo, Pete. Now this isn't really programming, but you know I find so many uses for it um, that this can be uh, pretty helpful. If you need a free Photoshop, photo P is great. And it works just like Photoshop, and it's all online, and you don't have to pay or download anything. They just have some advertisements on the right. I don't know how legally they get away with it, but that's that's the way it is. So photo P, great, great stuff. Uh, Claire asks, do I still write in PHP? You know, um, not really, unless I have a project that needs it. Like, and that's usually uh, in in my current department. That is usually uh, legacy programs that are still written in, in, in PHP. So uh, there you go. Um, let's see, Stack Overflow we caught. Um, MDM Web Docs. This is something I use every single day. I just do. I use this website every single day. I don't usually go to this main page and then search. I usually just type in MDN and then whatever it is that I'm looking for. Um, but if you're looking for anything in one of these, uh, let's see if they've got a list of web app. Here we go. If you're ever doing anything in any of these web technologies, programming languages, you know, HTML, cascading style sheets, SVG, this is the resource. Now, if you were to Google, um, use that. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you were going to use, um, if you were trying to figure out how, um, well, let's just click wildly into something here. Um, maybe we wanted to use a geolocation coordinates for whatever reason. This tells you everything you need to know about that, that function or that API or how that works. It gives you the properties. They do a really great job of, of telling you what the inputs are for a function and what come out, what comes out, um, and they they even have some explanation, uh, ex more explanatory, uh, common language uh, guides for common things. This is a little bit more technical, but you can kind of you can you can kind of parse it if you are uh, are already working in something like this, like geolocation. Gives you the methods or the function names. That's what a method is. It's a function. Um, and it tells you at the end, and this is this harkens back to the can I use website. It tells you when it was, usually it'll tell you when the specification or when that thing came to be, or if it has, what status it is. So if it's um, recommendation, that's early days. And we are lucky in that it looks like a lot of the features of that function are useful in a lot of browsers, but it looks like, uh, you know, Internet Explorer, of course, and WebView Android, the default Android uh, browser, have some issues with it, with one part of it. And so this is another, um, another great place to find information. 
Now, if you do a Google search for something like this, you may end up at a, uh, uh, oh gosh, what is it called? Um, I used to end up there all the time and use it. Uh, da, 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 da. W3 schools, right? So if you're a new programmer, coder, you may have gone to W3 schools. All right, disclaimer time. I started out using W3 schools and it was helpful at the time. And also at the time I found out that it had a lot of misinformation on it and it was not always to be trusted. I have heard in recent years that it has improved, but I will not use it. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to use Mozilla, uh, their developer network, and that's the one I just showed you. That is, um, that's the one that the industry looks to as the standard. Uh, Chrome's crew and, and, and Mozilla and uh, you know Opera, all these browser uh, makers, they have decided actually to use Mozilla's uh, reference as the canonical source for now. They're working on some new a new website, I believe. For canonical source, but for now, they are all using the developer.mozilla.org site. So you can trust that one. It's, it's a good, good, good site. Let's see. I'll save Git, Git for last because that, that's the one that loses people if I haven't already lost you. Uh, let's see. We talked about shell, we talked about command line. I haven't talked about an IDE. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, let's see, an IDE, there's your jargon term. Let's, uh, oh, how am I going through all these past commands so fast? You can see the key at the bottom, just the up and down arrow. Let's me go back through my history. So if I wanted to echo, make sure I add, uh, IDE to the list, right? <clears throat> so an IDE is an integrated uh, development environment. It's a mouthful. Yep. And if you, uh, there are a number of different uh, IDEs out there. There's some free, some paid, uh, depending on what programming language you use, uh, could actually could uh, lean you towards one or the other. Uh, Non-officially, I'm not a representative of, you know, NC State saying this is my official recommendation or whatever, but, uh, you know, definitely uh, check out VS Code is uh, my current favorite. This is VS Code. Um, you should have, I'll, I'll make sure there's a link in my gist. Uh, you know, later on when I update it. Um, and uh, VS Code is produced by Microsoft, which should give some people pause, but it is fabulous and it's very easy to extend it and do all kinds of things. Now, let's see, Visual Studio Code, yep. Let me show you what's going on here. So an IDE lets you uh, look at a whole project, a whole uh, application project <clears throat> at once in one place in any way you can think of that you want to organize yourself. And it lets you have editors, it lets you preview things, it can let you work with the, com the command line. So instead of using iTerm like this, I can actually pull up a terminal inside of my IDE right here. And there's some benefits to doing that in that this terminal is, is part of the IDE. So it already knows what folder I'm in. So I'd already had this IDE open. I'd had VS Code open in uh, the Twitch folder. So when it started the terminal, it started right there. And when it does, um, when I make operations on this application, maybe I have a debug console or um, some output or looking at logs. Uh, there's some integrations, some things that kind of work together, right? Having your terminal inside of your IDE. And uh, it's just, it's really nice. Oh, I didn't even show you one of the neat things about this uh, command. This uh, ZSH was uh, 
if I go into notes, you can actually see that this is a Git repository. And it's on, ooh, it shouldn't be master, it should be main. Um, it tells me the commit number and it gives me a, a branch that I'm on. And it says that it's it's uh, current with uh, production. So <clears throat> that's a lot of information. If you don't know what Git is, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Git, G-I-T, is a, uh, is a reversion control system. Or, uh, I'm sorry, a revision uh, control system. So what that means is that in the life of this file, jargon.txt, I can have a history of all the different versions that I cared to save for jargon.txt. Okay? And so when I first created it, I didn't have all of this, all of this entered in. Maybe I had an earlier version, I think, that just had, uh, you know, just had the CLI in it. Right? And, um, you know, later on, I added other things. Well, if I ever wanted to go back and look at that history, Git allows me to do that. And let's see, I can see, uh, I can see Git log, tells me the different saves, basically, the different save points I've made um, for this repository or this series of files and folders. And I can go back in history and look at what things look like in the past. And that actually it, it sort of ties into the, the whole Back to the Future thing in that, uh, you know, in, in the movie Back to the Future, uh, Marty McFly goes back in history to his parents' high school days and gets up to a bunch of shenanigans. And then when he gets back, back to the future, back to his current time, uh, things have changed, right? So the things he, he changed in the past affected the timeline to where he is now. Well, Git works a lot like that. Every time you make a save point or a commit to a uh, branch of, of a Git repo, and so a branch is like a branch of a timeline, like in Back to the Future, and so every time you make a save point or make a change to that branch, like Marty going back in time and, and uh, you know, kissing his mom or something, that changes the future of that branch, right? And so, yeah. And so it, it works pretty much the same way. And so if I wanted to go back and maybe make a new branch at a certain point in time, I could do that. And then I could have two separate branches where the where the files change, uh, the look, feel, maybe they're deleted, they're added uh, to this directory. And I can keep track of all those different versions of this directory, which is very helpful. Because as I'm working on a project, I, I go through all kinds of iterations where I'm, you know, um, you know, I decide to go one route and add one feature to my application. And then maybe it's not ready to publish yet. Well, I can go back to an earlier version of that history, that timeline. And that's the, the, the point that commit back in history. That's where I want to publish. And so I keep it at that. And this other feature, I keep in a separate branch off the main branch. And so when it's ready to, to work, I will merge it back into the, the main branch. So that's... It's, it's, uh, it's kind of a wild thing to think about. It takes a while. Uh, if you go to the Git website, I believe uh, we'll probably drop a link on that. Um, but it explains a lot. But if you go, I think one of the last programs I want to show you, I mean, I didn't really get to show you too much of this. Um, this is, you know, VS Code has, is such a nice editor. I can, I can look at different files very quickly. I can, I can search through all the files and find things and replace them. I can use even use regular expressions. 
So if you can see that very tiny text, hover text there, it says use regular expressions. And so I could actually use regular expressions to search through uh, my whole project, which is nice. I've got, I can't really see that. Let me make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> Source control is another way to say uh, uh, revision history or in this case, we're using Git, so that's our source control. There are technically other programs, but nobody really in industry uses them. Git is the is the default right now. It used to be like Subversion was really big, SVN, uh, but now Git, which is actually a a uh, descendant from SVN, uh, Git is the default uh, standard. But if I I can go back here and this is really nice. This is a Git integration with my uh, IDE that lets me look at the different points in history for a file. And so here I can look at, you know, what, how did this file change between that com the, the initial commit and then the next commit? Well, I added all these lines, right? Love it. So helpful. Uh, maybe. Recently, I, I changed some wording. I didn't like online tools, so I made it to online resources. But this is all saved, so if I ever want to go back and change it, I could go back and, and look at my history and, and maybe pull something out of it or branch something off at that, at that time, right? <clears throat> and that's why the document that I shared earlier, um, the one here, the gist, dev toolbox notes, um, I will be updating this page because this is actually on GitHub, which is a website that shares Git repositories, Git uh, uh, repos, like what I have, what what I've been showing you. So a repo is just um, it is a set of documents that has a history that Git manages. That's easy enough. That's a repo. And so I will be updating this. And if, so if you check this later today or tomorrow, you're going to see a lot more things added here. And um, you'll be able to even, if you're signed into Git, you'll be able to, I think you'll be able to make comments. I have to check that. I'll have to make sure that you can make comments. Or maybe you'll make uh, suggestions on things to add to the list. And that's one of the, the wonderful things about uh, a common place like GitHub to share your Git, your, your, your Git repos is because others can collaborate, right? And so others can get together and make oh my zsh like the thing i showed you earlier right this is this is the the zsh shell that we talked about a couple of hours ago <laughs> and this is all on github and you can grab this code and pull it down to your computer and you can make changes and you can suggest changes back to the community and um yeah, that's it's just a really great way. And so if you look at this this repo, we can actually go back and look at all we can see all their branches. If they have more than one, they don't. Oh gosh. That's a clean repo. We can look at their histories. They had six thousand commits. This is the last one. They changed something on that file. Right? So it's just a wonderful history uh, sort of thing. If you if you if you use Microsoft Word, like everyone does. Um, if you're in college and you use Microsoft Word, you probably had to turn your revisions on. Uh, if you're working with someone else in a group or you're a professor working on a document together, you may want to have your revisions turned on. That's kind of what this is. It's just a uh, record of all the things that happen to a file or to a directory. That's Git. Gosh, what else? Oh. VS Code was an IDE that I showed you. Sublime Text is another one. That's another one that a lot of people are huge fans of. Um, there are a couple of different versions of Sublime Text. I believe, I may have to double check this. I'm not sure if this is the most recent version. Yeah, no, it is, it is. Sublime Text 3. Um, it's, it works a lot like uh, VS Code. It's an IDE. It's a little more lightweight and, and uh, modular, so you can 
not have all the features um, and only add in the features that you want, which can, can be nice. Um, it's just a different different application that does the same thing, right? Um, for years, I used to use PHP Storm, which is a, a paid IDE from IntelliJ. Uh, it's, a, it's another good one. Atom is a free one. Uh, those are all good. And if you don't like working with Git in the command line or working on github.com, I highly rec recommend Sublime Merge. The same people who make Sublime Text make Sublime Merge, and it is awesome. It allows me to see visually a repo and see what the history of a repo is. And so I can, I can go ahead and make that bigger for you. I can see visually, here's the timeline, that blue line, you see that? So initially I started with one file and it had this in it. And then I added some edits to that file. And if I make any changes now, it will show up right there. So let me, uh, I'll make a quick change and we'll see. Uh, what file was that? That was the, this guy, dev toolbox notes, right? So let me add in why merge. I'm writing this in Markdown, which is a type of uh, language that Add repo to the jargon list. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. So Sublime Merge uh, is an, an editor slash IDE. And let's see, did I have a website for that? Just abusing DuckDuckGo here today. Let's see. Great. So I've got a link i'm going to go back to um, I, I hate to switch screens so much i'm sorry I'm, I'm, i get confused where which way which direction my window is but um here i can go ahead and uh, put in the the website and i'll save that so i did command s to save it i can also go up here to cut a file and hit save so that saved it and in my terminal, if I was working out of my terminal, if I hit LS, you can see that the color has changed here. And it's got a different little sim colored symbol here next to master. And if I were to do an LS dash, what is the one I've been using, right? Go back to what we talked about a long time ago, right? Uh, you'll see that, uh, oh, there's nothing. Uh, oh, I thought it would show up here that it was changed. Um, get status would tell me that as well. I've modified this file. And I can do all these things with uh, the command line. But I can also use my new program I was telling you about here. And look at that. So that's my last commit. I have not committed this change, but there's Sublime Merge. I can see the differences, and I can decide if I want to add that to the commit. I can stage it or I can discard it. Um, I can just stage or discard part of a file too, which is really handy. So you have to put a message with your commit, uh, adding Sublime Merge. And I have to stage it, so I staged it. My staged files now have that as a file. I have a message. I am going to commit it. And I've already set all this up, so I can actually just push. And that's a, a git term. You pull down things from a repo, so you pull the state of the world, right? The place you are on your timeline. Uh, if you're thinking about back to the future, polling is is getting the 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 authoritative version of a thing, right? So we're pulling down that version of the world, making sure everything's right. So maybe I'll I'll pull first, and it says here I'm one ahead, so I'm one commit ahead of the world, and if I want to share that with the world, I would push it. 
And since I authored this repo, it will yell at me because I'm not paying for this. It's a free copy. I should pay for it. And uh, yes, I am removing the Biff Museum. <laughs> and uh, now I have pushed in. I don't have anything new to commit because the world is 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 even with me. It agrees with me. And so if I go to the page, um, if I hit refresh on the page, look at there. Sublime Merge is now on the page. That's it. I feel like there's a hundred things I've gone through and a hundred things I've forgotten to talk about, but I hope this was helpful. And uh, I can stick around for a little longer. I'm not going to make the uh, moderators stick around, but if, if anyone else had questions, I'm happy to answer them. If there is anyone here other than the moderators, everyone's being so quiet. I see five, maybe other users. Welcome. Uh, again, I can stick around for a minute if you have any questions about the things scrolling by above us and I'll add some things to the jargon list. Let's see, I can do it in here. Oh gosh, we did so much. We did uh, the IDE, we did, uh, what are some other things that we've gone over? Get, push. about PHP, about repo. Thank you. Missed that. Repo is. I wonder how that'll change the scroll if I hit that. Oh. Yeah, it's no longer centered. It's a little bit more to the left to accommodate. Uh, let's see. We talked about Git. We talked about GitHub. GitHub is a website and is um, technically it's a it's a it's a private website. There are other places you can host your Git repos. Um, there's Git Labs and other places that you can uh, websites that offer repo sharing. So if you're not a fan of GitHub, you could do that. Yeah. So um, I guess I will, uh, let's see. Shell, terminal, command line. Oh, those are good. Yeah. I think I had command line, but I'll go ahead and add it there again. Um, so I guess I'll summarize, and if there's no other questions, we'll wrap it up. But uh, let's see if I can show you another cool thing that an IDE can do while I do this. So I wrote this, this uh, dev toolbox notes, uh, .md is the file. And this is all written in Markdown. And you can see that my IDE has highlighted things and changed colors to let me know that these are different subjects or different kinds of things. Here's a link, and so it's made it brown. Um, all handy stuff. And I also have an extension here that lets me look at the markdown as it will appear on uh, the GitHub website. So that's kind of handy, isn't it? It's kind of like what it'll look like. It'll look a little bit different on GitHub, but. Gives me a preview, and so I can see that. Um, so I guess some of the the main takeaways I'd like you to, to take out of this uh, is that you know programmers, developers, it takes a long time to learn some of this stuff. But uh, the goal here is to share things so you don't have to take as long to learn some of it and learn where to look, because 
finding out where to look to find things and find answers is, is one of the biggest problems. And if you have some of the good, the, the places that are, are dependable to get your information, um, you can kind of figure things out if you give yourself enough time. Um, and here's some of the common, I've given you some of the common tools and command line commands that we use. Um, I have a lot more, so I'm definitely up for doing this again sometime. And we've got a series planned, I believe. You can ask Claire and Colin. They've got a few other uh, programs scheduled for the following, the coming Wednesdays at noon if you want to tune in and, and uh, find out some other things about programming and learn some other things, uh, just learn some other stuff. Um, I think that's about it. Are there any other questions or comments? No one want to ask me about disc golf? No? OK. All right, well, it was it was uh, it was a lot of fun doing this. I hope people got something out of it, and uh, it, this will be recorded, so it will stay on our uh, Twitch channel for a while. So I believe comments do disappear after a while, uh, after a few weeks, if that's a concern for you. And uh, that's it. Oh, Walt will be doing some programming artwork. P5, J. Oh, that's awesome. I just learned about P5 the other day. Oh, that's fantastic. I might have to watch that. Yeah. And I'm sorry we didn't get into some of the more fun things, but I kind of wanted to get the nuts and bolts uh, of uh, things in your toolbox, right? And so maybe next time I come on, I'll do some more, but I'll do a lot more fun things. We'll, we'll, we'll get fun, have some more fun. All right. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later.